Well, come, coming off the bye week, it gave our team uh, a well-deserved, I think, chance to, to, to refresh mentally, physically, be able, to, be able to really get a lot of skill work in and have uh, you know, an opportunity where you're, you're, you're practicing without specific game prep at the, at the beginning of the week. And it gives our staff a chance to see uh, get out on the recruiting trail a little bit more, and then and then an opportunity to get back and get focused in on, you know, a very very improved Nebraska team. And uh, it was a great environment yesterday. Almost 7,000 fans, a pink zone game, uh, and I thought our team, you know, put ourselves in a position to to win. And you know, to have a half where we had one turnover uh, in the first half uh, to hold a, to hold another team in our conference way below. Uh, their, their usual season average in the Big Ten point-wise. Um, but, but again, we didn't finish. And, and looking back, it was, it, we had great effort. We had a, you know, Marsha Howard had an unbelievable game, you know, with, with great efficiency, you know, going against somebody who's, uh, you know, probably at least five and a half or six inches taller. Um, but when, when you're not able to score the basketball, it puts so much pressure on your defense uh, that you know it, it came down to a couple of possessions and just there's not much room for error. In the second half, we didn't take as good a care of the basketball. And uh, but but I, I'm proud of how our kids fought. And, and again, you're looking at a team that is really improved. It's probably the most improved. It is the most improved team in the league. Um, we've got to be able to take, you know, the win at Illinois on the road, how we played on the road yesterday in, in Lincoln and, and carry that forward uh, to, to the game on Sunday and then the following Wednesday. But uh, now, now our sights are turned on to Rutgers and an opportunity to, to send our seniors out playing great basketball in, in front of the Cole Center crowd one last time. You mentioned Marsha. Um, she was kind of up and down offensively early, and but other than the Illinois game where she didn't really play, it seemed like the last five or six games she's been a, your most consistent uh, producer. Is, has she found something, or is it a confidence thing, or what's what's happened there? Well, I, I think she did a great job yesterday uh, of understanding. You know, when you have the league's leading shot blocker. Uh, of how you can counter that. And, and, and again, I, I think she'll be the first to tell you, I, I thought our perimeter players put her in good positions in the different actions that we ran. Uh, her turnover levels are down. You know, that's, that's been a concern in the Big Ten. So now you have more opportunities uh, that, that she's able to, uh, you know, have a chance to score. But, um, you know, she, she did a, you know, I, I think that consistency yesterday I told her, on, on the on the flight home, I, I thought she she had her emotions in check better than any other game in the season, and, and that's both high and low. Um, you know, it's it's I feel like with our players, they can't get involved if you know if, if there's physicality that's not being called, or they feel like it was you know uh, it wasn't a travel when it was, and uh, and, and I thought she just did a good job, and and you know I, I you want those three people on your side. Uh, but I but I think that's a maturation, and even in the loss yesterday, I think it's important she knew that to understand that's contagious too. Because in in a good way, when you don't have somebody you know taking their energies towards the official, it's more locked in what the rest of our group can do. And and you hope somebody at the at the end of their junior year uh, can see that and be able to have that carry over into having their being able to play. Their best controllable basketball. It doesn't necessarily mean they score the most points or get the most rebounds, but but I think it's really important for somebody like Nia Beverly to see that, so she doesn't get frustrated when things don't go the way that they're planned. Uh, your defense, since the first Minnesota game, uh, probably even more of the first half of that game, has been a strength, and you've held down some really good offensive teams. What's happened uh, defensively? Just grasping things better? Uh... Yeah, and, and we've played different defenses, you know, and, and you know, I think you hope as you, as you go through the season, that was one of the things this past week, we could get back to some of the, you know, almost preseason concepts of tightening those, uh, tightening that up. Um, I don't think we're putting people on the foul line as much. 
Um, you know, I, the rebounding in the, in the last four games has been better. It was still minus seven yesterday. So then you're not putting yourself in a position to give up easier baskets. Uh, you hope there's always that growth defensively. And, and probably the, I think the biggest, you know, fr from, a, from a mental standpoint is the team understanding that puts us in the best position to, to be competitive and, and have a chance to win is understanding is, is the way our team is built right now is, is we're not going to be involved in a shootout where, you know, it's going to be a 78, 75 game. And, uh, you know, I, I think, again, it starts up front. I think Nia Beverly's defense has improved when she's had to play against some of, you know, not only the best guards in, in the league, but across the country night in and night out and, and having that assignment and, and, and understanding, you know, I think Abby Leshevsky's defense has gotten better off the bench. Um, you know, Kayla, I think a sense of urgency. Marsha's done a good job knowing she's always going to be battling against kids that are bigger than her. But I, I think an understanding of our team seeing, hey, this puts us in the best spot. We've got to be able to hang our hat on our defense. And going in, you know, one game might be one, one game plan. You know, what we thought for Ohio State was different for Nebraska. Uh, we have backup plans in place, but this puts, gives us the best chance to try to make sure people have to make as many contested shots as possible. Kayla McMorris has been is serving kind of as a bridge from the old to the new. Is she a pretty stable bridge for you? She has. You know, I, I think with, with Kayla, um, so much of take away her offensive abilities is, is that that's the leadership that, that I've really pushed for her is be a cons be a consistent how you are defensively be a consistent rebounding why you know we talked at halftime yesterday she only had one rebound at halftime and she had five in the second half uh, just those controllables and, and and again sometimes understanding that that she's got to be able to score in different ways to not really focus on that as much I, I think that 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 comes yesterday she got hot from the three-point line um, you know, with our team at times outside of Marsha, Kayla's our next best option to score the ball on the block, and whether it's with a mismatch or even different actions when, when, when people play zone. Um, a challenge I've made to her is, is this is like your legacy. You don't start looking at it a year from now. You look at it at how did, you know, for our kids to be able to look back uh, and say, I remember like that, you know, we talk about, you know, each of these last few games, we talk about it's the number of games plus one in the Big Ten tournament. That's the only thing that's guaranteed. And, 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 and if our team, who, you know, a freshman like Nia Beverly, who comes into practice and goes, well, I'm going to do this for three more years and have all these games, you know, I, I think we're shortchanging Kayla and Kendall Shaw. Uh, and, and for, for us to be able to talk about that. And, and I feel like in all aspects of Kayla's life, with, with her finishing to get her degree, with her you know, coming to the end of her basketball career, to just to be able to look back and, and say how different these last two years uh, of a position she's put, been put in and how important it is that, that there's a sense of urgency every time she steps on the floor. You mentioned Nebraska's improvement uh, as a program. Can you point to what they've done this year and say, here's what can happen against all odds, apparently? Yeah, you know, I, I think you know, what, what Coach Williams and her staff ha have done um, is been able to move on after a first year where you have transfers, you, you have people who um, – you know, leave before she ever takes, you know, be up before she ever is at her desk for one day. Um, and I think you can see the improvement of their players. Um, I, I also, as, as Dennis, as you and I have talked about, th there's a competitive improvement in their team. And, and, and it showed yesterday when one of their, you know, senior leaders was not playing well, was in foul trouble, was not effective offensively. That you could t that they have that depth to be able to have other other players, and it wasn't just yesterday's game. They've done this throughout the year. They they, they the non conference. I think they they had a couple injuries, and they had some 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 people who were trying to figure out exactly how they fit. But it's it's a testament to them. And 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 again with with our group that will be coming back. 
Uh, we talk all the time about th- this. We're not talking about next year yet. We, 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 for us to be able to improve next year, we've got to put everything we have left in this year to start writing that chapter. And that's the same, you know, the dialogue we have with with the five incoming signees as well as as future Badgers. Um, but I, but I think when you look at that blueprint, it's it's been a competitiveness. Uh, and I think a lot of that competitiveness is understanding that it's with the depth that you can take their, their leading scorer and Hannah Whitish, and she took her off the floor for a while yesterday. And, and to be able to do that and still run what you need to run offensively, be able to stay with your defensive game plan, uh, yeah, she's going to be back in at the end most likely, but you just have different options to look at, it, and, and we don't have that depth yet, but it, it is absolutely a blueprint we can look to. Rutgers has, has also gone through a transformation from a, a really down year last year. They had a great start that's kind of faltered a little bit. Uh, what do you see in them uh, going into Wednesday? Well, it's, it, it is almost like a new team in, in, in many aspects. And, and, and first and foremost, uh, you know, Tyler Scaife, who's a over 2,000 point scorer, uh, you know, has been an all league player every year since she's been there, uh, to, to have that scoring presence. And, and you can see um, how, how when, when they do get a little bogged down offensively, how she can really bail them out of situations. Um, but, but young women who were sitting out as transfers, uh, you, you know, women that were also uh, coming in as freshmen have really impacted. And, and again, it's given them depth. That was, I think, when we played them here, Last year, I I think maybe they dressed eight players, eight or nine players, and now they're playing 10 to 12 consistently every game, uh, double-figure minutes. So, um, like any team going through, you know, the big the rigors of the Big Ten and 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 who you have as your doubles, uh, really, I I think you know Rutgers is still back to that you know Coach Stringer's blueprint of being great defensively, being physical, um, making you earn every pass, every dribble. Uh, but but a very different when you watch them on film. Uh, there, there's a lot of numbers that when you watch last year's game weren't 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 anywhere to be found yet on the floor. So um, you know it, it is they got off to a great start in the Big Ten. Uh, you know they, they had opportunity. They've been phenomenal at home. They, they, they've they've unfortunately they've lost some really close games on the road that have come down to the last possession or two. Um, but but knowing that they're trying to battle for their postseason lives over these next four games. Uh, they're, they're so dangerous because, again, I still think they understand their identity uh, of they're not a team uh, that's going to try to push the tempo the way we've seen with Minnesota and Ohio State and, and Maryland to, to get a game that, that's going to be a high-scoring game. Um, and, and, again, our kids, they have that challenge. It's great that we have this opportunity at home.